<laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Chantal of Bonjour Belly Ayurveda. I'm here hosting your intro to Marma Point Therapy. And this class is being hosted by Banyan Tree Women's Collective, a 501c3 Bay Area nonprofit. We believe that health and health and wellness should be accessible to all and not based on your age, race, income, socioeconomic status. Um, so yeah, we offer a bunch of free classes and we're glad that you're here. And I am going to be teaching you about Marma Point Therapy. So Marma Point Therapy is, um, they're like energy energy points. So this comes from the background of Ayurveda. And Ayurveda is uh, the ancient holistic medical system that originated in India. Um, and sometimes um, you'll kind of see some overlap between traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Um, I would not say necessarily Marma points are not going to be exactly the same as as um, acupuncture or acupressure points. Um, they're not in the exact same locations. I don't study TCM and I'm not an acupuncturist, so I don't know all of the acupuncture and acupressure points. Um, but my guess is that they're similar in theory, um, but they're not exactly the same. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about me. Wait, hold on. Let me... I'm going to share my screen. So I am a certified Ayurvedic health counselor, holistic nutrition consultant. Um, I also facilitate yoga nidra. Um, I haven't been doing any yoga nidra with Banyan Tree for a little while. So um, stick around, keep an eye on our YouTube channel and our events page because it's a really sweet um, offering that I love to do if you're not familiar with yoga nidra. Um, it's kind of like a sweet guided meditation that you do lying down in Shavasana. <clears throat> um, yeah, just other fun stuff about me, study nutrition, love gardening, growing some of my own food. I adopted two senior dogs. <clears throat> um, and I really just love, I'm like a forever student. I love learning, um, about all things, health, wellness, um, digging deep into my own spiritual and emotional growth. And I really love nerding out on um, Vedic astrology. There's a lot to learn there. And I'm definitely, I'm not enrolled in any courses, but it's fascinating and I love learning about it. Um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, I want to share, sorry, another... Okay, so what are marma points? So marma points, um, the word marma comes from uh, a Sanskrit word. Um, Mru, mar, the Sanskrit phrase maryati iti marmani means there is a likelihood of death or serious damage to health after infliction to these places and hence these areas are called marma. Um, so by definition, a marma point is a point at which um, on your body, two or more types of tissue meet, like the juncture of muscles or muscle with veins, ligaments or bones um, or, or joints. So again, I don't study um, acupuncture, uh, but I don't believe that the acupuncture points are all where tissues or muscles or veins or ligaments or bones or joints meet. Um, they might be, 
but again, I can't, I can't speak to that because that is not what I studied. <laughs> Why is it not scrolling? Oh. Okay. Um, so in the ancient texts, one of them being the Ashtanga Hridaya, um, it talks about, again, being the meeting points. Um, and in another text, um, it's mentioned that they are sites which are painful, severe, tender, and show abnormal pulsation. Um, and really these points are considered the seats of life. So there are a hundred, I don't know why it's not scrolling. I'm so sorry. There are 107, there are 107 marma points on the body. Um, and these were mapped out in the ancient texts um, in India. Um, the ancient text I'm referring to is the Shushruta Samhita. Um, and you might often hear if you're like, studying yoga or if you're in yoga or Hindu culture or Ayurveda, um, uh, there's a lot around the number 108. So it might be like, oh, there's only 107. So it's actually considered that our self with a capital S, like we are the 108th point. So there's 107 marma on the body and then like we are number 108. So that was a fun little thing that I remember learning in class. Um, I'm not going to go over <laughs> all 107 points with you today. We are going to learn um, some points on your face and head um, and your um, feet because there are just so many everywhere. And if you were in my Abhyanga class yesterday, I was talking about how um, there are 107 marma on the body and not every single one of the points is where you access and should be stimulating to open up the flow of prana. So, the other thing I want to talk about is that, um, uh, so for the marma points, they're related to prana or life force energy. So if anybody's heard of the word pranayama, this is uh, like breath work practice, also a Sanskrit term. Um, and prana is your life force energy. And so when we're stimulating the marma points, we are opening up these channels because disease of the body and the mind happen when there is no more flow or the channels are blocked. Um, and so that's a reason why you might want to learn about specific points is to like open up to allow blockages to be removed and for life force energy to flow freely as it wants to. Nope, we're not doing that. Oh, I wanted to go up to the benefits. Okay, so benefits of Marma Point therapy, um, unblocking energy pathways, uh, Sanskrit term, your shrotas. Um, if you've been in any of my Ayurvedic class, or if you've been in any classes with me, I almost always am talking a little bit about Ayurveda. Um, so when it says here, pacify vata dosha. Um, mini Ayurvedic lesson, maybe a reminder for some of you, especially if you came to my class yesterday. Um Vata dosha is related to the elements of air and ether. So if you think of air and ether being like space, it's very subtle. It's light, it's mobile, air, wind. Um, and when you have vata dosha in excess, 
So when, when I say excess, it's like it's out of balance, right? More than we then is in harmony for your mind body state. Um, that might have you either in a physical state of like feeling really dry and constipated, like maybe your hair and your skin and your nails are like dry and brittle. Uh, maybe your hair is like breaking um, in the mind or your emotional state and your like mental state. If you have Vata dosha in excess, you might be suffering from overwhelm, um, anxiety, worry. Um, you might be able to start a lot of things, but you're not finishing anything. So everything's just kind of like open-ended. <laughs> that might also create a lot of overwhelm because you just have a whole bunch of things that you started and nothing is like getting to completion. Um, so we want to pacify uh, vata dosha and bring it into balance and marma point therapy can help by um, doing that because it helps to regulate the autonomic nervous system which is related to viana vayu which is um, too technical and we're not going to go there um Okay, so it also vata and ama. So vata dosha I just talked about. Ama uh, is another Sanskrit term that gets um, described as the toxic residue that builds up and accumulates in your body. Um, it's like the undigested material. You can think of it as actual food material that hasn't been digested properly, um, but it could also be undigested thoughts. So, um, physical, mental, and emotional. So Vata and Ama, which accumulate in the body as you age can cause physical, mental, and emotional inflexibility. And as Vata increases, which it naturally just does as we age, um, it can lead to degenerative effects. So Marma point therapy can help to slow the aging process down. I mean, we all exist in this human body form. So, you know, like you will age out and you will die eventually. Um, so I don't want to say that it's going to, you know, prevent death, but it slows down aging, um, forms beneficial connection with your subconscious and resolves insomnia. So I talked yesterday in the Abhyanga class. Okay, so anybody who wasn't here in Abhyanga, check the YouTube channel for Banyan Tree Women's Collective and you can watch that to learn a little bit more because I kind of just keep referring back to it. Um, yeah, Abhyanga, and I just lost my train of thought, which is funny because there goes Vata in my mind. <laughs> um, but... Abhyanga is a really grounding, nourishing practice, right? It's a warm oil massage that you can do on yourself and you can also go and get Abhyanga done. I mean, in the Bay Area, there are more and more Ayurvedic um, like health clinics and practitioners out there. Um, if you live in a little bit more of a rural, remote area, there's probably a lot less people who have heard of Ayurveda. So I don't know if you would as easily find like an Ayurvedic wellness clinic to receive Abhyanga, but watch the video and you can do it yourself. Um, forms beneficial connection with your subconscious and resolves insomnia, prevents dehydration if a medicated herb infused oil is used, and it can help to strengthen the immune system and improves mental abilities. So it's great, right? Who doesn't want that? Slows down aging, great for sleep and your immune system, great for regulating your autonomic nervous system. So really lovely practice. Um, I am going to show you some points that you can do. Um, and I do also just want to say that um, again, like as Ayurveda becomes more well known in the world, um, hopefully this is something that you can go and receive.
from others. So if you've been in the Banyan community since at least our January challenge, um, myself and Bashari are two Ayurvedic, well, she's an Ayurvedic clinical specialist and I'm an Ayurvedic health counselor and um, we, well, she's pregnant right now, but we are coordinating to offer Abhyanga together and incorporate Marma Point therapy. So if you're curious or interested in receiving that, um, yeah, you can message me afterwards because you are going to be able to do this for yourself and it is just a lovely, beautiful thing to receive fully um, when you can just lay down and have this practice done like to you and you're not actively doing it. But okay, let's do some on the face. So you can incorporate this with um, Abhyanga as I was mentioning earlier. So doing uh, Marma Point therapy with like warm oil um, on your hands is lovely and it's not necessary because we're not like rubbing oil like all over our face. Like, you know, it's Marma Point therapy. So most of the time it's just going to be like a finger point is all you need. Um, and if you have a little bit of oil on there, great, sweet. You can totally do that. Um, so I want us though to take a moment to ground ourselves before we give Marma Point therapy to ourselves. So um, before you begin the practice, I want us all to just get seated Um If you can plant your feet on the ground, that would be lovely. If you're sitting cross-legged, that's totally fine. But like if you're in a desk chair in an office, then get your feet so that, so that they're planted on the floor. Get your spine up nice and tall. You can leave your hands either um, flat on the tops of your thighs or up or resting in your lap, however feels nice and comfortable for you. We're just going to take some deep breaths just to ground our energy, kind of just slow ourselves down because we've just been taking in a bunch of information. So just breathe normally. I just want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it at the top. And slowly exhale. Take another deep breath in. Exhale. Another deep breath in, filling up your belly, imagining roots coming out the bottoms of your feet. And exhale, releasing any tension, drop your shoulders, relax your forehead, and just let your breathing return to its normal rhythm. Your mind and your body are calm. And you're ready to receive, ready to share this love with yourself through this ancient practice.
Gently open and close your fingers. Maybe lift one foot up and rotate one ankle and the other ankle. Just slowly blink your eyes open. Return to this space. Okay, so let's learn some marma points. Before you do this for yourself, um, I would recommend that you take a moment to get quiet and get grounded like we just did. It doesn't need to be anything really extravagant or long. Um, and I would say wash your hands. If your hands are dirty and you wanna take a moment to go wash your hands and come back, you can. I already washed my hands before class cause I'm gonna to be touching my face. Okay. So the Adipati Marma point is the master controller. It is at the crown of your head and you can find this point by placing the base of your palm um, right uh, at the base of your forehead, kind of where like your eyebrows meet, and then take your middle finger and where your middle finger lands is where your Adipati Marma point is. Okay, so that's one way to find it. Um, and we want to stimulate the point by going in a clockwise direction. And we're not pressing really hard. Just, and you're going to find, you know, like because you're touching yourself, you can, you can identify, you know, what is feeling comfortable for you. But Marma Point Therapy does not require pressure you don't need to be pushing down really you're just touching and you're rotating gently it doesn't even look barely like my finger is moving i mean you can kind of see my hairs moving a little bit and in this stimulating of your marma point therapy this adipati or this um master controller point is really great for relieving and opening the cha the channel for um, anxiety, stress, and fatigue. So, like we're we're stimulating this marma point, we're opening the channel for prana to flow freely, and you can count or not count. You can do this for yourself for like a minute. You could do it for twenty seconds. Doing it with your eyes closed and even like imagining while you're rotating your finger here in a clockwise direction that you are opening a channel. Okay, so that's your Adipati, right? So just palm to the base of the forehead and then your middle finger straight back and wherever it lands, that is where your Adipati Marma point is, all right? The next one we're gonna do is your stapani, um, and this is your third eye. So your third eye is here right between your eyebrows. Um, so this one's a little tricky, not to find, <laughs> um, but when you stimulate it again, you wanna do clockwise. And so this is gonna sound weird, right? Clockwise, when you're doing it to yourself, it's gonna feel like you're going counterclockwise. Okay, but if somebody was looking at you, you're going clockwise. And again, not a lot of pressure, just kind of like slow. You can see better here how I'm rotating, right? Just little circles, little circles. And the stapani, the marma, is great for relieving worry, sadness, and this is a helpful one for insomnia.
Okay, so this is the stop any stop any marma point. Um, the next one we're gonna do is the shanka. The shanka is um at your temples, so you know you're gonna your temples right in that kind of like indentation outside of your um your eyebrows not all the way to your hairline but kind of like right before your hairline um this is also good for stimulating um if you're having sleep issues or if you struggle with grinding your teeth or anger It helps to calm the mind. You can actually use two fingers for stimulating the um, Shanka Marma too. So that's the, the other interesting thing about Marma point therapy is that like some, some points um, are bigger than others. Okay. So again, I'm like, I'm not quite at my hairline. I'm just kind of like right in between. This should be like slow and gentle. Your breath is easy. So I've just shared two that are good for sleep, right? So this is a nice one to do before bed. So you can do these, the shank, the shanka marma, the temples, or you can do the stop. Well, you can do and or you can do the stop any as well. Um, okay. Um. So this is one that's gonna be good for allergy season. So the fauna, if you follow along si the side of your nose, you come down here, um, here, it's kind of like, you're not like pressing into your bone, like you shouldn't sound like that. And you're not pressing that hard. <laughs> um, the points right here. It's good for your allergies, cold, cough, um, bringing more prana to your brain. It's kind of like where the fleshy part meets the bone. So you're not quite like on your nose bridge. You're kind of like a little out outside of it, just right in there. Okay. So yeah, if you're getting spring allergies, you're getting really congested, you're feeling some like upper respiratory um, issues, the fauna marma is good to stimulate. I'm sure you can feel that like you don't need to to press really hard and if you start pressing really hard it's like doesn't feel so good. <laughs> um Okay. Okay, we're going to do let's see. Let's do We're gonna do, um, we're gonna move to the feet. All right, um, question, do you do clockwise for all the points? Yes, you do clockwise for all the points. I have a question okay. regarding the now clockwise. I'm like, gotta get my feet in the camera. Don't really want, don't, don't love that. I have a but question regarding the clockwise. <laughs> Is the clockwise here my um 
my is the clockwise time? when I'm looking at myself in the mirror or clockwise when I'm okay. doing it myself? So moving to the feet, we're going to do the Talahidraya, which is at the middle of the soul. Oh, someone is trying to talk. I cannot hear them. Oh, that was me. I had a question. Oh, interesting. I can't hear any of you. That's okay. I have my speaker on. And I'm Ruby. I can see that you're unmuted and Rosario also. Are you both trying to talk? Yeah, perhaps you type your question. I'm going to put you all on mute um, just because sometimes that gets distracting if there's like background noise. Um, if it's clockwise or looking in the mirror. Oh, that's okay, Arlen. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. You can check out the replay on our YouTube channel later. Um, okay, would, let's see if I'm doing, I'm just, sorry, I'm testing it out by looking at the mirror that I have <laughs> right here. And I'm like, this looks like it's counterclockwise and I'm looking in the mirror. I don't know, when I'm looking in the mirror, it looks like, it looks, I'm getting confused. Um, no, when I'm looking in the mirror, that looks counterclockwise. What does this look like to you all? Clockwise? Okay, this looks like clockwise to me. See, but like the tricky thing is if I'm like here, 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 here. Oh. Oh no, that is tricky. Okay. So <laughs> you can try, you can try what I just did. So when you're doing it on your face, like when you're doing the stop bunny, it feels like it's counterclockwise. Like it this looks counterclockwise, but it's clockwise. Um, when you're on and when you're here, yeah, that gets more confusing. Well, when you start doing your hands and your feet, it is going to be more clear that you're going clockwise, you know? Um, so I'm going this way. So it's like. Yeah, that's the same thing. When you're here at your um, Adipati, it also is going to feel like you're going the wrong way. So yeah, I would say when you're doing your head and your face, it's going to feel like counterclockwise, but you're going clockwise and that is the right way. And I will just say, because I'm very Pitta, uh, when I was in class, I was just like, why? Why does it matter? Like if we go, if we're going counterclockwise, does that mean we're closing the channel? Um, and my, um, the Ayurvedic doctor, the person who was leading the class, he just kind of like chuckled and he was just like, sometimes it just is what it is. And we don't have an answer that like might fulfill the need of an answer that you want or like a response that you're looking for. Um, and so I think, you know, maybe that doesn't feel good for you either. Some like when you're just sort of like being guided by ancient tradition and texts, and there is like a trust that the wisdom that was practiced and then shared um, is as it is, and you take it and I'm all for you and me um, not blindly trusting. So then practice on yourself and see if you feel a difference <laughs> is what I would say, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's if you're feeling like, hmm, question everything, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, do do the practice and, and see how it impacts you if you want to like test it by going the other way 
which is like, oh no, it's making my insomnia worse. I don't know if you're doing it the right way and it's feeling good and you're doing it the other way and it's not impacting you, then um, it's information for you. Okay, we have just one minute left and I have to pack. So I wanna show you some stuff on your feet. So this is the Talahidraya. You're gonna go on the middle of your soul, right in the middle of your soul. This is the Talahidraya. This is a good point. And again, we can see when we're stimulating um, ourselves, it's clockwise. This is a good one for fatigue, again, tiredness, sleep issues, and also circulatory issues. So the three that we talked about so far that are good for like insomnia or sleeplessness, we have the Talahidraya, we have the temples, which is your Shankamarma, and you could also do your third eye, the Stapani Marma, for insomnia. Okay, so this is Talahidraya. Um, okay. Kircha Shira, you're going to put your thumb on the top of your big toe and then your index finger on the bottom. And you're just going to, um, ooh, sorry, scratch that. <laughs> you're going to put your, your finger at the top of the hump of your heel. So like, you know, most of you have like a heel pad. You're going to put a finger like find like the top of your heel pad and you're going to put your finger right there. And this is one that you can stimulate um, for digestive issues, sexual weakness, mental tension. All right. This is the Kircha Shira, top of the hump of the heel. All right, and the next one we're gonna do is the golfa, which is at the junction of your ankle. Um, it's here, juncture of your ankle and joint of the tibia. Good for um, oh wait, is it? Is it not here? It's here. Junction of the ankle and the um, joint of the tibia for sleep issues, sexual disorders, eye strain, restless leg. And then last one I'm going to show you. Ooh, okay, so right um, at the base of the big toe and the second toe on the top of your foot is um, Shipra. So also a good one for uh, right now, seasonally wise. It's good for cold, respiratory um, disorders. So this one and the uh, fauna, which was along the side of your nose, if you're having issues with respiratory or circulatory cold cough, you can do this and the fauna. Shipra is also good for um, sleep issues and back pain. Okay, I don't know how many we did. We didn't do all 107. <laughs> Um, but that was a little quickie. That's why it was called Marma intro. We can't get through everything. Um, if you're curious and you want to do more Marma point therapy, learning more stimulation, um, shoot me a message. Maybe I'll do another class on Marma and we'll go deeper in other parts of the body. Um, thank you all so much for, um, yeah, book recommendation it might just be called Marma. And I think it's by Dr. Vasant Laud. Um, yes, that is a good one. And thank you on behalf of Banyan Tree Women's Collective. Thank you for hosting me, Banyan Tree. Um, I absolutely love teaching and being here with you all. And again, there's going to be a little end of the class survey. Please, please, please take the 10 seconds um, to answer it after I close this out and appreciating you so, so much. See you, see you on the interwebs. And if you're in the Bay area, keep an eye on our events page, cause we will have more spring and summer classes happening in person in Menlo park. And yeah, thanks again, community love being here and appreciate you all.
Hey, good night.